Anyway, my name is Keishan Koster. I'm married. I have two kids. I live in Delft, although they modernized, modernized since then. I like riding motorcycle. This is in South Africa. This is the last hand-drawn bridge, uh, sorry, hand-drawn pontoon in South Africa, and I just received photos two weeks ago uh, that they're replacing it with an actual motorized pontoon. Um, and I like Java, and mainly I like big systems. And in big systems, you have lots of time problems, and that's what you guys are here for. And I have a habit of starting with my last slide, so this is my last slide. Um, and my, my talk really has two points. One is that, um, you know, for all the things that we make, usually you go into computing because you like things to be clean and finished and perfect. And time does not allow for that. There is, yeah, I'm, I'm not even going to be covering 10%, maybe not even 8% of the trouble you have with time. I'm going to ignore, for example, that the world is slowing down. Uh, things like that. So uh, what I want to do in this talk is I want to get into your heads that it's important that you accept some of the problems in time and just accept them as they are. And uh, I want to impress on you the importance of not writing any code that deals with time. There are geeks out there who are smarter than us to combine who do that for you. So use libraries and don't futz too much with code and time. All right, so let's make this more concrete. This is, a, I'll zoom in a bit. Uh, this is a, an error message we got about two weeks ago. Yeah, and time is something I talk to my customers about uh, almost always, uh, and yet we still have similar problems. So in essence, it says, this token cannot be used before and then a date that was really close to the point in time that this was happening. What's going on here? So um, I've, I've built a few systems that have authorizations in them. I don't really like it because it tends to uh, introduce time issues. Um, and so here we have two systems, one with, that generates a token, and then the second that checks that the token is real. And, and this is where this problem happened. So let's think about that. Yeah, so the token is generated in the future. I mean, this is a, a, a rephrasing of the earlier error message. Uh, how can it be? I mean, if I generate a token, and then I give it to you, and then you read it, all of these things take time. So if you apply common sense, this error message makes no sense at all. There's no way I can generate a token, and then afterwards, uh, before that, you have to receive it. How does that even work? Now, the problem starts, and now I need to take you guys into hardware. Yeah, the problem starts all the way in the hardware. This is something I picked off of the internet. It's actually a very accurate clock thing. Made by Adafruit, if I don't, uh, I'm not mistaken. It's very nice. You, if you do any Arduino or Raspberry Pi programming, you probably want one of these. It keeps your clock for it, and it's actually very good. It is temperature controlled, which means it has a little uh, temperature sensor inside, and it'll adjust for the ambient temperature. Because one of the things that happens when you have clocks is that when the amb ambient temperature changes, your clock will go faster or slower depending. Clocks shouldn't go faster or slower. It's annoying because then time goes off. And this one, considered pretty good, drifts about five seconds a month. Yeah, so if you just put this one, put the battery in, if you reverse it, there's room for a battery, and you just leave it in a temperature-controlled environment, it'll go off by five seconds for the month. Okay, now, picture each of one of you having one of those, and they all drift at different rates. There won't be two in the room that have the same time a month from now. And that's what we call distributed systems. Yeah, this is what we base the cloud on. And those clocks are actually worse than this. So let's uh, look at a few definitions. So let's say there is an actual time. Yeah, there's a whole world out there that says there's not, but let's assume, just to keep this talk within the 35 minutes I have, that we have an actual time. 
And uh, imagine that's that time. And I'm, I'm using second resolution here, but the problem is usually in nanoseconds, milliseconds. But just for sake of argument. And I have three Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, running each with a clock. And you can see they have different times, yeah? So the term local time is used to denote the time that the computer thinks it's at. Yeah, and if you are like me and you used to have games that had the clock, well, uh, to check if you had paid for it, you had to set the clock back so you could play the game. Remember those? Um, local time can be different from real actual time. And the accuracy, that's the word for the difference between the two. Yeah, so this one is accurate by two seconds. The top one about one second accurate. Accurate can be above or below. Between two, any two clocks, you can determine an offset. And this is usually an offset between local times between nodes in your network. And before you say serverless, serverless, no, you have the same problem. Yeah? Don't worry. <laughs> and the system as a whole has a precision. In this case, the system comprises of three nodes. And if you look at the most low time versus the highest time, subtract the two and you get three seconds. So there is a precision of three seconds. Everything that happens within a window of three seconds appears to be roughly at the same time. And you'll note ordering is not guaranteed. We'll get to that. That's a really nice talk by a guy. I put the YouTube link in there. I'll, I, I try to put links in the bottom so you guys can read back uh, when you get the slides. He has uh, 57 hits on his YouTube video. So I hope after this talk I'll find that that number goes up by a fair bit. And he explains some of that. He goes into much more detail than I have time for at this stage. But this helps for reference and for naming. So why do clocks drift, even on servers? I mean, they're perfect, right? You pay $200, $2,000, you spend, I don't know what, hundreds of dollars a month for Amazon, and they give you this virtual machine. Why does that drift? Well, start with the hardware. The actual clock is probably going to be similar uh, as the one I've shown earlier. And that works by generating ticks. All it does, it, it sends out pulses. And those pulses are received as interrupts on the processor of the host OS in this case, right? Take a, an actual physical machine. It receives the pulses on the, on the processor and it runs a little piece of software. And you can already see, okay, so there's a pulse, and then the machine has to wake up for that, and it has to do something in code for that pulse, while my beautiful app is running, consuming CPU. Okay, interesting. Keep that in mind. So then these pulses are counted in the operating system. Right? Sometimes they have hardware for this, sometimes it's software. And now we have a VM. So imagine this is a virtual machine host, and on top of it we have, in this case, two VMs. These guys have their own clocks. They get simulated pulses from the host, which sounds to me like an insane implementation, but it happens. Some virtualization, some hypervisors will send simulated pulses. Others will give the guests access to the actual clock. At any rate, it means that your virtual machine is receiving pulses and virtual machines may be swept out, swapped out to disk. If it's idle a lot, for example, or if anybody else is busy, your virtual machine may not be there for a couple of seconds because someone was found more important than you and you were put on disk. Okay, so if you're on disk, how are you going to process your pulses? The answer is you're not. And the effect will be that your clock will drift away from the hardware clock, which is already drifting away from the world, which is oh, slowing down, but I wasn't going to talk about that. Yeah, so in this stack even, between the host and the guest, you will start to see that the clocks are not pointing at the same time. Virtual machines being worse, because they have two drifts adding. Okay, so how do we remedy that? Let's start with NTP. NTP is a very simple pro pro uh, protocol. It's 1980s, I think. It's really old. And all you do is from maybe an atomic clock, you synchronize, you send it messages, it sends you messages back, and the clocks are synchronized between the atomic clock and your machine. 
Perfect, right? Except, obviously, there is a distance between you and the actual clock and the network, and you'll be a VM and you won't miss your pulses. So this can bring you within millisecond precision of an actual clock. And that's assuming you use NTP, because I still find customers in 2019 not using NTP or any other time sync protocol. So please, by all means, check that this is the case. Now, obviously, if, if the time is off, there may be a problem. Yeah, so I'm maybe two seconds in the future compared to the atomic clock. If I now said, OK, I, I receive a new time stamp, oh, I need to go two seconds back. If I then turn the clock back two seconds, everything on my machine will crash. Because they'll see, wait, where did the two seconds go? Hey, wait, we're seeing double two seconds. What, what, how does that work? So it's very important, and that's one of the things that NTP does, is that that time is eased back. So instead of doing two seconds worth of pulses in two seconds, we spread out a little bit, we, we miss a few pulses deliberately, which has the effect of our clock slowly getting in sync while still progressing forwards in time. Because that's an assumption that all of your code is making if you're not careful. Or if we're behind, you know, suddenly our seconds are hugely faster and then slowly we... But that means there is a time when we're out of sync. In fact, we'll probably overshoot, which means we'll be out of sync the other way and then we'll go back very slowly. NTP is set up in what they call stratums. I don't know what the names come from, but uh, the model is this. There's a stratum zero, which is the atomic clock. And then stratum one is typically ISPs. They will have their own time service because, you know, if you put up one machine and everybody on the internet connect, connects to that one machine, you know, it dies. So instead of you connecting to stratum zero server, you will probably go through your ISP who is going to be stratum one or two. There's a pool of volunteers who offer Stratum 1 servers that you can connect to from your devices or from your laptop or from your service even. And by definition, each NTP client is also an NTP server. So if I have one machine that time syncs, I can use that as the server for the rest. So this is how you can set up a really safe environment in your local LAN. You're not dependent on servers outside your network per se. So I write the same time here, but you have to imagine all of these, you know, gently drifting into each other's direction, missing each other by an inch, and then do a little dance. And all these clocks will be almost, but not quite, synchronized. All right. So let's go to our aforementioned bug. Let's look at the logging. Those machines have the right time. Yeah, millisecond precision, remember? So then if we look at the timestamps, who sees it? If we order them in time, suddenly the error message makes sense. The problem still doesn't make sense, yeah? But the error message makes sense. Because the server receiving the token, the bottom one, was ahead by maybe 100 milliseconds, maybe 50. But that's enough because it was in the future. And it did receive a token from the future. Yeah, if you look here, the token is only generated 278 milliseconds. And it was checked to 44, 30 milliseconds. This token is illegal. And this is when you guys are going to have to accept that this is a problem you're not going to solve. Oh, well, I mean, by all means, if you solve it, let me know, okay? I have work for you. Uh, but most of the time, you're just going to have to accept that time and ordering in distributed systems is going to be imperfect. And you're going to have to look at this as a human and go, well, that ain't right. I know what's happening. And this is also why time is such an annoying construct when you're coding, because humans are used, I mean, my wife, uh, with all respect, I love her. But to make an appointment with my wife to be on time? I don't know. My mom, I love her, 
but she runs her watch 10 minutes fast so that she will be on time, but then she knows she's 10 minutes fast, so she will take 10 minutes extra and still be late. Point being, people are very easy with precision on time. They don't care if it's a day off or an hour off or, oh, is it next Wednesday or the Wednesday after? For people, time is a, a really natural, easy, flexible construct. Which also means that your product owner, who is, after all, human, is going to be very easy with, oh, yeah, yeah, just, it, yeah, it should be something like this. And you go, no, I can't program that. And you'll be right. <laughs> and then QA goes, hey, there's a bug there. And you'll be like, yeah, no. So first, you accept that this is a given, that this will happen in your system, and then you find workarounds that you can get by QA and by a product owner. That's how you deal with this. You don't deal with this by building the perfect time synchronization system. You don't have time. Speaking of time, so, you know, there are Americans in this room, there are Turkish people in the room, there are Dutch people in the room, there are maybe a few guys from Minsk in the room, you're probably going to be writing emails, you're going to be sending messages to each other, your devices are going to be exchanging information. It helps if you know where the month is in a timestamp. <laughs> yeah, it does. Especially, you know, if it's March 5th, my birthday, March 5th, you know, people get it wrong. I do get presents, you know, surprising at, the, at a different date, but... But there is a standard for this. There is called ISO 8601. It's one, my, one of my pet peeves. It's like, guys, I mean, it's not hard. All you do have to do is format your timestamps like this. That's it. Everybody knows what each field means. And if you make a slight variation, so I know C-sharp systems will, for example, default to this format. And immediately, because I happen to work in a Java system that has a C-sharp system attached that, you know, immediately there's confusion. I mean, is this the local time or is this the UTC? And then that, do I write winter time there or not? And then we agree, well, we'll just send 0, 0, which is equivalent to one on top. And then there's a third party that interfaces with the C-sharp system and they start putting time zones in there. Ah, jeez. Anyway, so please, use these formats on the wire. With people, not so much. Yeah, people will need a timestamp in whatever format they expect. And then it's going to be different for Americans, for example, than it is for Dutch people. And that's fine. But between systems, all you have to do is to agree on this little format. There's an ISO spec and everything to back you up. And after that, lots of problems will go away. And especially on the time zones, we'll get there in a minute. This is a guy called Tom Scott. He's one of my YouTube heroes. Again, there's a little video. And um, he talks about time zones. And I uh, invite you to look at his face. <laughs> that is no accident. Who here writes code that has time zones in the code? Yeah. You're liking it, aren't you? <laughs> if you have a QA on the team, all you have to say is, well, we have time zones. He'll be like, oh, or she'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. That's all I need to know. <laughs> yeah? Time zones are hell. And I'll, I'll show you why. And it, it, all, of, all of what he says, what I say, boils down to the same thing I said earlier. Time zones are for people. They are not for computers. For example, and this is... I, I can't boil down, you know, 20 minutes of excellent talk into a slide, but some of them are large. I, in, I think it's India, if I'm not mistaken, that is a single time zone. That's large enough that when one person gets to school in the dark, the other person is in midday, effectively. And then there's a time zone that is 15 minutes off, and everybody still thinks, if you're in Europe, you think time zones are in hours. And it doesn't occur to you that I think Nepal is 15 minutes away from whatever line, imaginary line people drew. 
And the lines, if you look them at the map, they're not straight, right? They're like randomized. So you can't even use the location on the map to determine the time zone. And then there are the countries that change time zone. Yeah, I'll have an example of that. In fact, I took Minsk of all the things, right? I thought Minsk would be nice, clean, but no. And I'll tell you, this is from the time zone file, right? This, this, uh, there are people out there who spend their days in rooms like this, talking about time zones, okay? And they produce a file like this, which is huge, and it describes all the little details of your country, your city, changing times in history. Why do you need this? Well, you need this if I send you a timestamp and you want to represent the actual time for the user. Well, this happened in 1990. Okay, let's look at 1990. That means we have to translate, oh, we need the Russian time zone at that point. Because reasons. It happens to match yeah, with today, so we're lucky. But if it's 1943, it's two hours off. And this is a short one. Yeah, this is one you can remember if you want to. There's stuff in there that wouldn't fit on the screen without you guys going, what? And then time zones are political. This is Turkey. It takes effect today, which is not much noticed. Time zone change taking effect that day. Good morning. Your systems are one hour off. Okay, so how do I do business with the guys across the world? They all think I'm in a different time. There are anecdotes that in wartime, when news is limited and is word of mouth, that entire cities were in effectively a different time zone because everybody thought there was or was not winter time in the city and everybody around it didn't think so. So then a whole city essentially, poop, suddenly has their own time zone for a while and it's based on a rumor, so you won't find it back here. And then, poop, you go back in. There are countries like this. So Turkey is one, Argentina is one. I know for a fact that where the political parties end up arguing about whether we should or should not have time zone changes. And it becomes a, you know, look at me, I can affect time zones thing. How, how am I going to write code that supports that? Speaking of time, how about the dateline? What do you guys think the dateline looked like? <laughs> can I have your code that supports this, please? Yeah, there are countries you can literally go east and forward in time or back. I don't know, I always confuse the two. It doesn't matter. You can travel for a fair bit and pass two days and back on this map. And then there are countries that are on that line and it may jump, depending on local politics, to the other time. So this is my point. Don't code with time. Just don't do it. If you're QA, have a good look at this. All right. So leap years. Simple, right? Divide by four. Oh, wait, except it isn't. Yeah, who has written the divide by four mistake? Yeah, okay. Only three. That's actually pretty good. Okay. Who can see the bug? Right, this is a regular expression. Raise your hand if you see the bug. This is a regular expression that tries to pattern match a hour, minute, second timestamp. You'll see the colons. In between, you'll see hours. Uh, yeah, no, it's or it's minutes and seconds actually. Ooh. The first bug is that I forgot to copy and paste the first part. But okay, so minutes and seconds. I'll grant you that. Minutes and seconds. Regular expression. Yeah, so, sorry, um, uh, the hour part is missing. So that's the first bug. The second bug is it's still on the screen, though. I still see it. No one? This one person, yes. What about leap seconds? Yeah, the, the hint was on this page, yeah? So this is a valid timestamp, and I'll draw your attention to the 60. Who has written this 
or similar regular expression in production code. Yeah? Much more problems. There's loads of this. These are the simple ones, the ones I have time for in 30 minutes to talk about. Yeah? So this goes to my second point of the talk, which is you don't code with time. You leave this to Yoda time. You leave this to whatever time library you guys like in your project best. You just don't touch the timestamp. Just pass it into the library. Whatever comes out is probably better than what you could have made of it. Luckily, there is a standard you can use, and it's called UTC. The Universal Time Zone Coordinated, because French. So UTC is a way to express time that all of these problems you deal with later. You still have to deal with them, obviously, but you don't have to deal with them in your code. So as long as you keep, who here runs uh, code that doesn't use UTC? Oh, you guys are in the wrong talk. That's nice. So everybody uses UTC everywhere. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's okay. You have to answer it for yourself, yeah? Look in the mirror tonight. So what you do is you go as soon as you can, which means on the API endpoints, which means in the UI, you go to UTC and you stop worrying about time zones. Yeah? None of your code deals with UTC except the outermost layer of your code, either towards humans or to other systems. There you can have not UTC timestamps. Everywhere else, only UTC. When you do the conversion, you don't do the conversion. Don't do it. I've coded it. Don't do it. In your databases, I say here UTC, but you know, there'll be a product owner who goes, oh yeah, but I need to know the timestamp when the case was entered into the system. I know. So you'll be UTC, and then there'll be an extra field that says, okay, and this is the name of the time zone, so that you can do that mapping. But you don't change the timestamp to whatever it is that your product owner answered. And don't tell them, they'll be confused. Yeah, that's why I say maybe add a time zone. If you can get away with it, don't add a time zone. Makes your life much easier, and the product owners will probably be happy because they'll have enough information. Because I said earlier, people are flexible with time. An hour or two doesn't matter to them anything, especially if this is something that works in days or months. And then only when you're in the glass, in JavaScript, in the final thing that renders the time zone, that's when you can go from UTC back into local time. So in a stack, this is your average stack local to UTC, and then you have UTC bliss everywhere, and it doesn't matter what backing store you use, just, just use UTC. And then obviously in the UI, you can go back to local, based on the browser setting, the locale, yeah? Because that tells you the right time zone that the person is in, except it doesn't. Because then you'll discover that, as in the company that I'm in now, the machines are actually set to use in the US locale. And this is for a Dutch ministry. Makes no sense at all, but it means all the timestamps come out wrong. Eternal confusion, and Excel also hates it. So you can't rely on the locale of the user, and yet that's the only thing you have to determine what the time zone is that the user expects. So if you're building a system where you enter a case in Russia, you look at it in The Hague in Holland, and then you have a, maybe a, a help desk in India, and you three need to talk about when that case was entered, that's when confusion starts. So, in summary, please, I implore you, accept that time is fuzzy. It will jump about. Yeah, you'll have events that may have timestamps that don't really make sense. And that's normal. That's, that's, your, that's a given, if you will. People will talk about time as if it's easy, and it is for them. But that doesn't mean it's easy for your program. And don't start doing DIY around this. Yeah, there's libraries, there's stuff. Like I said earlier, there are people who spend their time on this as you spend your time programming. So please, 
use their work rather than trying to invent your own. Thank you for your time.